earlier Doug showed you deploying from a container, right? The, the container was sitting in the registry and he deployed it as an application and then he deployed it as a job. And now we're going to go up one abstraction layer and Doug is going to be showing how to deploy from source code. Maybe you don't even know what a container is or how to build one. Yep. All right. So again, back to the main landing page. Now, by default, we will point you to a GitHub repository uh, that has a whole bunch of samples in there. Um, if you uh, are interested in learning more about Code Engine, <clears throat> I would highly recommend that after you go to our, our landing page and read some of our documentation, you can see over here, if you actually want to start playing around with things, this is a great resource for you. It has a whole bunch of uh, small, very targeted samples that say, hey, you want to figure out, you want to see how to use config maps with Code Engine. You want to do secrets. You want to do a build with Dockerfile. You want to do a build with uh, with a build pack. Each one of those is a completely independent sample that's focused on just that one thing. And I'll be honest with you, not a whole lot of documentation there on purpose because we didn't want the, the message of how simple it is to get your job done to be lost. We'll give you a couple little comments in the, in the bash scripts and stuff to show you how to do stuff to say, hey, this is where we're building an image, that kind of stuff. But very targeted so you can get your job done as quickly as possible and say, okay, copy that command line into your own bash script substitute your things for the names in there, and you're good to go, okay? So github.com slash IBM slash code engine is the repo you want to look at for very um, focused targeted samples. Now, we are starting to add uh, tutorials to there as well. In particular, if we have time today, we'll go through one that generates thumbnails and stuff. That's a much more extensive one. That one has a complete ramblings to the nth degree about what's going on under the covers, and that's more from a pure educational perspective, it's something if you, if you want to learn what's going on behind the scenes and why you're doing what you're doing, look for the quote tutorials in there. But the samples, very targeted. Okay, so with all that, let's go ahead and say, okay, we're going to start with source code, point it to my GitHub repo, and let's hit start creating. Okay, so I could technically choose a job because that that repo points to an application. I'm sorry, a workload that can be run as either. Except I'm going to choose application because it has a UI to it, which is much more exciting. Um, again, I'm going to choose, choose the default name. Now, the only difference here from the previous one where we started with container image is um, I need to actually tell it where to store the image after it does build it. Now, this is a point in time statement, give you a little bit of futuristic type thing. We are looking at hiding more of these things from the user. Because as Uwe said, maybe the user doesn't know about container images. They don't care what container images are. So, we're going to see what we can do in terms of removing some of these extra steps. But for as of right now, you need to specify some build details. Okay. Now, I can change some of these things, right? If I made a mistake and that was the wrong uh, GitHub repo, I could change it. Um, default branch is main, so that's all fine. Let's keep going. Now, this is where you tell us how you want to build. As Uwe said, you can build from a Docker file or you can build using the Pakato build packs, where we actually will try to detect the programming language and pick the right runtime for you. In this particular case, I know there's a Docker file in there, so I'm going to let it choose Docker file. And to speed things up, I'm going to choose as big a machine as possible. That way it goes really fast. OK, but you could choose either one. And obviously, the default would have been just fine. Eh, go away. OK, so with that, this is where a little bit of extra is needed. I need to tell it where to store the image. Okay, now, by the default, the UI knows about the IBM container registry, and it has all the secrets set up for you under the covers, so that makes it really, really easy. Unfortunately, the CLI does not have that, and that's why later on when you see some of the demos, you'll see I'll have to do a little bit of extra work there. So the CLI is a little bit extra magic, but that extra magic is coming to the CLI soon. Okay? But inside of that registry, I'm going to store it in this particular namespace, and that's fine and I'm going to just let it default to the name. Okay. So I'm just going to hit Done. And that's not actually doing the build yet. That's just defining the build itself. OK, give it a sec here. All right, so um, yeah, OK, so these are all the same settings. I, I filled in all the build information. So aside from that, it looks the exact same as when we had just a container image. And we're going to hit Create. Now, as you might imagine, this is going to take a little longer because you can see it created a build. And say so not just created it, it then also submitted it. Okay, so <clears throat> this should hopefully not take too long. But again, let's talk a little bit about what's going on under the covers. So under the covers, what we're doing is we're cloning your GitHub repo. We are then 
Based upon what you told us, whether it's a Docker build or a Picado build pack, we are then going to download the appropriate infrastructure to do the build itself. Well, obviously then I execute the build and we will then take that build image when it's all done and push it to the container registry that you pointed us to, right? Now, keep in mind, because we need to be able to push things to the registry, that's why I had to specify to that UI uh, the, uh, the container registry credentials and information, right? Because even if it's a public repo like Docker Hub, um, you still need write permissions to actually push it up there. Okay, now the demo gods are messing with me. So let's go ahead and see what happened here. Let's go take a look at our applications and see why it thinks things failed. Image builds, it succeeded. I'm not sure why, let's go back to the application. Okay, it must have just been a, a network blurb or something like that because I thought it failed. So let's go back into the application because it's now deploying. And you can see it's actually ready. So let's go ahead and kill this window to make sure I'm not cheating. Hit open application. And you can see it's that same Hello World application, okay? So with just a little bit more time, <clears throat> you can see that you get a very similar simplified user experience, except you're starting with source code, right? So again, a little more information. I had to tell it where to store the image. But aside from that, you get the same simple user experience. You get the same runtime options available to you. Everything's the exact same, right? And again, let's go ahead and take a look at what this, what this looks like to the command line. And hey, there you go. I actually included the CE this time. You can see this is where I can start copying and pasting instead of typing from memory. So here, you can see the command line gets a little bit larger, and we're going to be working on making it just as simple as a CLI. But you can see now yeah, they give very similar information. Okay. <clears throat> Unfortunately, for the CLI, you have to actually do the individual steps. And again, we're going to simplify that. But the first thing I had to do is define my actual build. Again, this isn't running it, this is just defining it. So I had to give it a name, had to tell it where to find the source code, had to tell it where to store the image. So again, it's in the IBM container registry. I had to point the build process to a secret that has my credentials, right? And we did see that through the tab, right? And I'm, in this particular case, I told it to use build pack, but I could have said Docker file, okay? I believe the default is, Actually, I can't remember. I think the Docker default might be Docker file, but I can't remember. Anyway, obviously you can specify whichever one you want. <clears throat> okay, so again, just defining the build itself. To actually run it is pretty simple. One click, it's the UI through here, just hit, <clears throat> excuse me, build run submit, specify which build you actually want to run. And then again, when it's all done, I can then do an app create, pointing it to that container image. And in this particular case, because IBM Container Registry is a private repo, I had to specify the secret to use to actually do the pull from the registry, okay? Again, we are working on simplifying this even more, but as of today, this is what it looks like. All right, any questions, Uwe, that I should try to answer? Yes, there's one I think that I, I answered a bit in the chat, but I think that we could elaborate a bit um, sort of um, via voice, and mm -hmm. that is, um, hey, how about implementing like, a pipeline strategy. I think that means like more complex strategies around pipelines. Um, and the question is, hey, I can see source, external registry, dockers and all, but, but what about more complex operations of a pipeline? And I'll let you chime in here for uh, right after me, Doug, but basically what a code engine is meant to only have a very, I would call a minimal pipeline, right? We, we have another service on the IBM cloud that is a much more, um, sort of advanced pipeline service. And of course, you're also more than free to use your own pipelines, right? To, uh, which might be very complex with unit tests built in and all sorts of things. And then as a, as a final step of that more advanced pipeline that you might be building yourself, you would sort of produce a container and then push that container to code engine, deploy that container to code engine. So we, we uh, code engine is not aiming to be a, a, a complex, advanced bells and whistles pipelining system. Yep. Yeah, and actually there, there are two different ways I, was, I would have answered that question. One is exactly what you said, right? Use your own tooling that sits on top of Code Engine, whether that's the IBM tool pipeline stuff that Uwe mentioned, or it's your own make file scripts or whatever. That's all fine and good. You can definitely use those. Um, we do have a REST API that you can talk to, and obviously you can use the CLI like I'm showing here to script all these things to build more complex pipelines. 
Um, the other thing I do want to mention, though, the second possible answer is, I'm you know personally I came from a container world, meaning a Kubernetes Docker world. So to me, I if I was doing a pipeline that um, that wasn't overly complex, I obviously would use Docker files for that, and I would actually put those pipeline steps inside of my Docker build, and I would have done maybe a multi-image build kind of thing, or my, what's the term they use? A multi-step build process, right? Where you can do multiple froms in your Docker file, <clears throat> that's fine. Anything you want to do from a Docker build perspective, you, we could support here. Just change your strategy from build pack to Docker file and, and that'll work just fine. So two different levels of automation there. Both are acceptable and you can do whatever you want. Code engine will support both. Okay. Any other questions, Ufay? Um, I think that's it. Um, there's uh, some more questions around, hey, um, you know, can you show me some examples of these advanced pipelines and how would I call Code Engine? Um, and while you're demoing again, I'm going to dig up some of those samples and put them into the chat. Okay, yeah. I obviously, that GitHub repo that I pointed to, the IBM slash Code Engine yep. one, all those are, are scripts. Uh, there's, a, there's a build script and there's a run script in pretty much every single demo there to show you how you can do the exact same thing. And you can obviously then automate those and wrap those with your own build scripts. So those are available to people as well.